Hey guys, this is Keith with the Wire Nerdy Podcast. I'm going to start this episode with a correction. At the very beginning of this episode, I say the wrong number. This is season two, episode number nine. I think I said eight, probably because I had it written down wrong. My apologies. So, I'm going to get the show started for you guys, and just know there's an error right out the gate. This is nine. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Wired Nerdy Podcast. This is season number two, episode number eight. My name is Keith, and I am here with my best buddy, Doug. How is this week treating you, my friend? Going good. Uh, spring temperatures coming up. Uh, afraid I'm going to have to start mowing the grass, but other than that, it's doing good. I know. My grass is already starting to get, get green. I'm like, oh, already? I love the weather. but all Absolutely. The work. <laughs> it's like, eh. Got to do all this this outdoor work. I'm not so sure about. So, <laughs> but uh, it's it's part of it, right? Absolutely. Yep. Although I will be putting um, blades on the new electric mower for the very first time. So yeah, how's that thing working for you, still? dude? I absolutely I love that mower. It's so cool. It's uh, I don't know, man. It's it's awesome. And I was watching videos on how to like swap the blades. So easy. Super no easy. belt. Well, there's yeah. no belts. Oh yeah. It, yeah. So yeah. it's like. You literally pull like two pins, pull the deck out, and then it's just, I don't know, man. It's so easy. So I'm looking forward to it. And having no yeah. belts, no filters, no oil, it's awesome. Now, I know not everybody, there's, you know, negatives to electric when it comes to like cars and all this stuff. But as far as a mower goes, man, it does it does good. I have about three acres, and we've talked about it before, I think last season. But, man, it's so much easier. So much easier. Very nice. So, yeah, I think you have... I don't know. Your yard's probably a little bigger than mine. I don't know. Uh, I, I mow about three acres, you know, so with the house the and uh, driveway and stuff. So about the same. Yeah. Uh, I have a big old gravely 60 inch cut, you know, gas mm-hmm. and oil and all that. Oh, fun whoa, whoa, stuff, whoa, whoa, so. wait. You have a 60 inch? Yeah. Mine's a 42 zero turn. Oh. <laughs> Holy mackerel, 60? Because the next size up was like a 50 for me. Mm-hmm. No, I got 60? that bigger one because I'm just mowing big field area. Okay, that makes and sense. It still it takes me uh, two, two and three hours. Even with that big of a deck? Yeah. Dang, dude. That's pretty awesome. Lots it's a of zero trees turn. and obstacles to go around. Yeah, it's a zero turn though, right? What you have? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that makes it a lot easier. They're not very good on hills. I need to get some little beefier tires, I think. Oh, really? Yeah, because they're real, the real wheels mm-hmm. are what they drives They just spin it. and spin. Yeah, and then whenever you do the zero turn, of course, they turn opposite directions and all that kind of yep. fun stuff. Um, so, wow, that's really cool. So we, you know, we're going to have an interesting episode today because this was kind of an impromptu thing. We have had uh, my brother on before, Brian, who is a retro video game collector. He's very avid. We also help him with the uh, Columbia Retro Game Conference. We work the booth. We're going to cover that again this year. Uh, he had been on us to try this place. It's a new place also in Columbia, which is probably about 30 miles from where we live in Missouri. Uh, and this is an area that's called the Arcade district it is i mean how would you describe it doug i mean a block of building like help me because it was weird yeah, when we pulled up i'm like uh, how, do you, how do you describe this <laughs> definitely interesting you can tell you're in the arcade district by all the purple lights on the sides of the building mm-hmm. i'd say you know one city block uh, it's more of a rectangle than square uh buildings scattered everywhere uh this guy or gal whoever owns it has you know a body shop uh a uh little car repair place he has a record store a book store yeah uh, and a uh, comic book store arcade place i mean he's just got all kinds of things mixed in there i thought for a moment it might be my chance to actually get doug to a comic book store but they were closed by the time we got done at the arcade Uh, so what we're going to do today is uh, we took a trip there impromptu this weekend uh and we're we're going to just kind of like what we did with Comic-Con. We're going to share the footage that we grabbed. Not a lot. We're going to forego the nerd news this week just for the sake of time. But don't worry. We will make up it for it next week because there's plenty of news to talk about. Uh, but we just want to share the experience where we went to. And what's unique about this is really the the comeback of the arcade. You're seeing more and more of these. And the idea is that instead of being quarter munchers, you're just chucking quarter like the olden days, you pay a flat fee. I believe it was, was it 10 bucks? 10 bucks unlimited play. I mean, it's a heck yeah. of a deal. And it's hours. You can spend hours yeah. there. Oh, yeah. And so it was pretty packed when we first got there. And then if it hits a certain time, uh, then certain below a certain age, kids have to leave, which we yeah. could definitely tell a difference in. It, it calmed 
a little bit. So I'll, I'll, I'm going to set up the screen share. Doug and I both took, just like we did with Comic-Con, we took some video and then we also took just some some photos. Now, I will say we haven't vetted these photos. Some of them may be kind of rough because we were busy running around checking the place out. The very first yeah. thing we saw when we walked, I mean, you can tell it's new because you can see the hay on the on the ground here. This is an outdoor shot for our audio listeners of the outside of the venue. And it looks like they just seeded the grass and they have these picnic tables and an outside. That wasn't a television. It was like a projection. You think? I believe so. I it may have been one of those big TVs, like a football stadium. It might be. I didn't, didn't see a even see where the projector was at. I think it was a TV, but but they play movies to, on it. Yeah, they do. To kind of describe the area, like you said, it's a nice little grassy area. Uh, picnic tables. Uh, I've seen on Facebook and other social media that they've hosted a lot of movie nights. They uh, tell you, you know, bring your popcorn and your blankets. Come out, watch a free movie. It's all free, I believe. And then uh, the arcade is right behind that, uh, or right in front of that screen, which we're getting ready to go into. And I think the idea being is you, the licensing and copywriting is different if you don't charge for a film, yeah. if I remember correctly, if you're just showing it. I think if you're not making a profit, uh, the studios really have nothing to get mad about. Yeah. As far as I know. Now, this video might be kind of shaky because I was doing it when I was walking in. And you can kind of see this place, it's quaint. It's very narrow. You walk in, they serve drinks. They it looks like they have a liquor license of some sort. Um, and they cram arcades into just about every corner that you possibly can. So it's narrow when you walk around, but man, are there a lot of arcades. Yeah. That's the first uh, thought I had is going in there. You see the front desk to uh, get your armband and it's uh, very thick. Uh, yeah. Right now you, for those uh, watching, I'm playing uh, star Wars. Uh, good old shoot 'em up game. Yeah, this is the this isn't the pod one. I thought it was the pod mm -hmm. one, you know, with the rounded one, but it's not. It's the one that actually you can shoot. It's on rails, right? And you have a stick. You were playing yep. it. I didn't get to play this one. It was uh, really good, and you know uh, that unlimited play option. All the arcades are set to free play, so you just keep hitting the start button and keep going and keep going as much as you die. This is. What I like about these, because if you've ever had an arcade game that you really want to beat it all the way through and you just didn't have the money, uh, you know, plugging those quarters or those dollars in there, it gets pretty expensive. This well, that's, is the place a, that's be. always been the benefit to me when it comes to arcade games and emulation and retro. Many of these games were designed, they're hard by nature, but they were designed to eat your quarters and you could never really oh, yeah. get very far in them. And I love emulation and arcade games uh, because you can just you can just keep adding lives and, you know, keep playing. So you have that same feel here. Now, all of these were original. Mostly he, mm -hmm. the, the person who owns it did have like a projector set up with one set of fighting games that were uh, emulation. If I remember kind of correctly. a Pandora box, I believe on the table. The yeah, little it was arcade sticks. It was, but all of these are original. Now there's a pro and con to that. It's cool that they're original, but critique wise, I would say you, Doug's playing Star Trek Voyager here. Many of them, especially with the light gun games, which you understand, they have CRT monitors with them. Mm. You can even see the fading on them. You can pick it up even on the imagery. And so that was Doug and I's complaint is that the upkeep on these because of the wear and tear and how old many of them are. Many of these are like, you know, 20 oh, yeah. plus years old, you know. Yeah. So you can tell they're starting to get a lot of fade on them. I think it would be difficult to to keep up with, you know, all of them. Oh, I agree with you. Uh, most of them, I mean, they're in pretty good shape, but you can see some signs of age and wear. Uh, a lot of really good titles. You know, we had uh, Area 51, uh, really good uh, shoot 'em up uh, Sega Strike Fighter. I know you were playing that at one I point. There's some images of that, and it was really good, um, believe it or not. Uh, some other ones, uh, Aliens Armageddon, it's a really good shoot 'em up. Very good graphics. I think it's a newer generation uh, arcade cabinet. It is. We got some footage of that as well. And I tried my best to just walk around. There was an upstairs area. And I tried mm -hmm. to walk around. They had, man, there were just arcades everywhere. Now, upstairs was interesting. You go up there and you'll see this big room and projector. And I believe they were actually playing Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. Uh, lots of seating up there. But I just wonder how easily you'd be able to enjoy a movie while all everybody else is running around squealing, uh, playing video games and stuff. That's true. I didn't, I thought they would be better served mm -hmm. with making that space up top. 
more arcade space because as you see the camera we're walking around on the video here it's really tight and oftentimes when people are playing they're standing like right in the walkway uh, yep yeah. uh later on uh for those uh listening those watching uh they were playing the matrix which is a favorite movement in mind but just to set the mood you know you got the uh, string lights you got the tables there it's a pretty cool little place and the place is called Witches in Wizards Arcade. I think you got a really good shot of it, which we'll get to mm-hmm. here in a moment. I, I, I paused the video on it on the neon sign on the outside, but that's what the place is called, correct? If anybody wants to check yep. it out. What a great name, too. Yeah, it really is. You and know, going so, back inside. Uh, yeah, I went back inside. This this is, I don't know why, I think I didn't know my camera was on. <laughs> you can see I'm playing that Sega fighter game, the F-16 oh, fighter. Yeah. <laughs> I'll skip through that one. You can see some of them. Oh, that, that's, oh, you were trying this to. This should be a me video. Yeah. Oh, this is you video. You were recording. Yeah, this is the run on the Death Star. You know, uh, oh, Luke cool. is there using the force. Yes. This is the same uh, one that you were playing on rails where you were shooting the stormtroopers? Uh huh. Yep. Oh, I didn't know it had a flight component to it. So oh, I didn't yeah. play this. So one. it's the Battle of Hoth, uh, Battle of the Death Star. Oh. There's a couple different campaigns in there. Very and cool. it's really good, actually. Well, you played uh, it for a while. I didn't play this one. There were so many games yeah. you can't necessarily get to all of them right away. So, see, so uh, continue there. I kind of stopped my video on that, but you, uh, with free play, just hit that continue button and keep going. Keep going. All right, cool. Now, I think that was the majority of the videos I had. Let me go ahead and close that share and open up another one. Here. Yeah. As you're getting the videos, uh, one thing that I really enjoyed and I haven't got to play a lot of is uh, pinball games, uh, pinball machines, pinball games are so awesome. Um, and the uh, artwork and the detail, the lighting, the rails to go to different areas. It's amazing. Now, they had some pretty old ones, and they had some brand new ones that were really cool. That's right. And we were surprised that just, oh, here's more footage. It's probably either your or my video. I'm not sure which. I don't know which, yeah. It doesn't matter. We we throw them all in a big pot. This was interesting. They had an a, an alien, and I don't know if you, you got a picture of it. We'll get it here in a moment. But in a side room, they have an alien that looks like it's had an autopsy performed on it. I was trying to get to it. I'll find the picture. It's in this room. It's a yeah. green glowing room. They had some oddities. They also had statues from Mars yeah. Attacks. Mars Attacks, yeah. Werewolf. Uh, so they decorated it in a very unique way. Doug playing the 911 police game there. Now, this one, I've never played this game. You had to duck on it, right? Yeah, I think it had a little motion sensor up top, and it uh, literally moved when you moved. It was really cool. So if you think of Time Crisis and games like that where you have the pedal to duck and reload, uh, that uses your actual body somehow to determine if you move left, move yeah. right. It I think it has really cameras cool. on you. Yeah. Yeah. It threw me off because when it I played said it after stay you. on the mat. So I'm guessing the new version comes with a special ah. mat that probably has a, a picture of two feet on the bottom. Yeah. To and show has you sensors to know. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. I hadn't played that. This is a great shot, by the way. This shows you there are some of their, just some of their pinballs. This is Doug playing Independence Day. Oh, and my favorite movie, by the way, too. Yeah. Is that what you were hankering to play? So I see they had the Star Trek one back there. Yeah. It was kind of jammed up and I was waiting, waiting, waiting. They, uh, I think someone came along and fixed it and I got to uh, play it. So the it pinballs were popular. They had quite a few oh, of those. Oh, big time. Here's the Mars. The, uh, yeah. Mars attacks. Yeah. So this, and you can see Indiana Jones in the background. Hopefully YouTube doesn't flag us for copyright violation. It's a still image. So I'm hoping it doesn't. But this was yeah, playing. Just well, like Doug said, this was playing upstairs, right? Yeah, it was. There was uh, a handful of people, 10, 15, but I think at that magic hour when the kids had to go home, it uh, emptied pretty quickly. There was a dad and an older kid uh, watching the movie, and they seemed to be enjoying it. It was not too loud, but you could still hear it going on with all the commotion. And they had rows of couches that you can sit and watch a movie. But I kind of go back to what Doug said. Over in the corner, you know, they had this decoration is what the image you're looking at now. And it's just different characters from different movies. But I go back to what Doug said. It's so noisy in there. I think it, it, it I appreciate it, but it's it would be hard to watch a movie. Now, Brian or my brother pointed out that they used this room with the projector they're playing the movie on for didn't you say tournaments? Tournaments, yeah. yeah. I think, Which is a cool uh, idea. I like that. I saw they had a Street Fighter tournament. Uh, they have a Facebook page that they uh, stay pretty active showing their movies and their tournaments on. Yeah, yeah. We've seen this video here. Just clicking through them. We've seen this. 
Oh, there's the Alien Armageddon game. You so here's the start of the pictures. Uh, yeah. For those uh, listening only, this is Alien Armageddon. It's one of those big two-gun cabinets, uh, light guns, and you are a colonial Marine going to uh, get the alien uh, off the ship. Yeah, you played this one. I, I did not. I think you and Brian played this one yeah. for a little while. We uh, figured out all the buttons. You know, there's multiple buttons on those guns, like throwing grenades and mm. all kinds of fancy stuff. Yeah, they had a, quite a few light guns. Again, another shot of the the video, the Indiana Jones movie I'm playing. <laughs> More great pinball. The Lord of the Ring ones, I, I took this image. I, I wish I would have played it because I've played this one before. It's a really good pinball game. I got to play it a while, and uh, if you look at the picture there, uh, it's got these metal rails that your ball can go along, kind of like a railroad track. Oh, that's cool. And then the uh, towers there that you can knock down. And uh, I, see, I see the uh, ISR on right yeah, here in the corner. That's it's awesome. really cool. And they shake and they move if you hit the ball, and then you really? have to oh. attack a Lich King. It was really oh, cool. We're going to have to go back and do it. Did you play the Star Wars one on the right? I did not get to it. It was pretty popular. Because it has like a TIE fighter in it. Uh, looks like a TIE mm-hmm. bomber, to be specific. Uh, I don't want Joe yelling at me. Oh, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> Our friend Joe is really in Star Wars. Too. <laughs> he corrected Doug oh, on his last Update <laughs> to last week. He told us that those droids were mouse droids. Mouse droids. No, the little one I want to uh, sweep my house and move along. So. <laughs> That's right. The one on the, again to yeah, the Imperials. Have, the little droid. black ones, right? You're talking about the black ones that the Imperials mm-hmm. have. Yes, yeah. Yes, yes. yeah. <laughs> we did talk about that. Ah, here's the Sega Strike Fighter. I like this a lot. I've never played this before. So this game it had a chair. Now, I think they did it for space reasons. I think the chair is supposed to be able to slide back and forth, but they it's had supposed it. supposed to adjust to you, yep. They had it jammed all the way front, and I could barely get into it. Now, once I did, I didn't realize halfway through the game there were foot pedals, and I couldn't even. I'm six foot. I couldn't. I couldn't barely yeah. fit. And when Too I tight. Put, oh yeah, I went, my knees were hanging out the side. And as you see, the pinball is machine is right next to the right of me, and then there's a Terminator game to the left of me. My yep, knees would hit one. Up. So this game really kind of I couldn't play it fully because. In order to pivot your plane left and right, you had to step on the pedals. I, I couldn't do it. So I just had to stick with, you know, the controls that they have for thrust and yep. maneuvering. But it was a fun game. I've I've not played this one before. It was really good. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of uh, Afterburner. It's a Sega title. A little well. bit. A little bit. They have older ones like Zaxxon. That's a great shot of a game. I'm surprised how many 80s centrics games. Yeah, they had a lot of games that uh, I didn't recognize, but then a ton that I did. And it was good to see those memories, Mm -hmm. you know, back from uh, Penny Change and all the arcades that you used to go to. Exactly. Now, Afterburner, you just mentioned this. I didn't even know. I didn't even see the Afterburner one there. Yeah. Now, I think uh, from what I remember at Penny Change, the controller was backwards you know how you can invert your flight controls on some of the games i think Mm -hmm. they inverted it and it's kind of hard to control but it has been a long time since i played it yeah there's a better shot of the 911 that doug was talking about and i think it had a camera system on it that allowed you to to kind of move back and forth and it was interesting yeah now i had heard of area 51 which is a shooting game wasn't this the one that you and i this is site four this must have been a continuation right it must have. You know, I remember Area 51, the original cabinet, and then they did a joint uh, cabinet with Maximum Force, if I got the name right. Mm-hmm. I'd have to look that up. But uh, I never played Type 4. It was a little different. The graphics, to me, did not look as good at all. You didn't reload. F- that was weird. No, it was <laughs> weird, too, yeah. I but definitely it, like the first Area 51 better. I thought the first Area 51 cabinet was a little bigger as well, if I remember yeah, correctly. I think it was. I'm going to keep on clicking here. You see me at the police 911. I sucked at this one so bad because I didn't know I had to move. <laughs> and you get a, a sense here. You Mortal Kombat 2. They got Monaco GP, which is a classic. A quiz game, which is uh, by Capcom for Dragons. Yeah. And this was fascinating. It looked like Golden Axe style graphics. But yeah, you, the, the dice would roll. This was so different. I've never seen this before. Starship Troopers. Did you play this one? The pinball machine? I did. It was uh, pretty cool. And now there should be a picture coming up. Uh, they had the little sayings and stuff everywhere. And uh, there, some of it. You got it. There it is. Two buttons. Remember, maggots, there are two flipper buttons on the side. So it's telling you that there's two flipper uh, actuators uh, buttons on the right side. It was That's hilarious. Awesome. Ah, I love this pinball machine. 
So this is me playing on an alien. Now, this thing is brand spanking brand new. new. You can see the new technology in it. It had a mini LED screen inside of it that when you would hit you know, certain parts, it would show parts of the movie. It wasn't just on the top head part. It was in the yeah. inside the pinball machine. It would play parts of the movie. And at one point, there was a scenario in which, uh, you know, and I've played this before with games where they throw a lot of balls at you. I think I had six pinballs at oh, once yeah. in play on it. And it was insane. Absolutely yeah. insane. If you go one more, I believe I got the front. Uh, yes, oh, you there did. You there's the there's the screen. Good shot. So you can see the little face hugger eggs in the back corner. Mm -hmm. Those are kind of the. Uh, I don't know the exact term in pinball, but the ones that make your ball bounce back and forth really fast. Yeah. The bumpers. Um, yeah. The bumpers. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. That simple. Yeah. Uh, you can see the rails, uh, like I said, kind of the train style rails. Mm -hmm. And then that screen is up in that upper left-hand right. corner. Now, that would represent a door. It was really cool to see the animation on that screen. They played actual film footage on the top of the cabinet and in, in combination with that. You see the queen's alien head in the back at one point that mouth open and the the second one came out of its mouth it was such a yeah, cool cabinet it was, it was really cool <laughs> i love this cabinet you could tell it was brand sprinking new i mean it was oh, pristine. Yeah. it was pristine yeah it was it was fun uh, lethal enforcers <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had to get our uh, lethal enforcers on. You know, I remember, I have so many memories of this game. It's great. It's a great game. The downside, again, was Doug and I played this for a little while. It was a good old fashioned CRT, and many of the characters blended in. We we were getting yep. shot. You couldn't even see the characters. Yeah. And I do want to point out, and Doug doesn't want me to point it out. Uh oh. Look at the trigger discipline. <laughs> Yeah, I am failing <laughs> on my trigger discipline. I, I would assume that I'm Who's the on empty of? cylinders there. Oh, yeah. he's after you're assuming. I see. That's my, my excuse. Yeah. For those listening in audio, it's a picture of us holding these toy guns for Lethal Enforcer cabinet. My finger's not on the trigger, but Doug says. <laughs> Whoops, my bad. <laughs> Photo evidence. Uh, here's another picture of Mars Attacks uh, yep. Alien. Really good. Ghost Squad. Not this yeah. one was interesting. I did not uh, play it, but uh, you and Brian got tried. to try it out. Uh, I tried. He did. The guns didn't. Well, the gun I'm holding didn't work. Now, what's neat about this and why I want to try it, it had an actuator in it to where when you would shoot, it would do that loud clacking, clicking sound, you know, mm -hmm. like clack, yeah. clack, 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 and the gun would shake. I think it, the motorized, and again, these things are old. These are original cabinets. Mine didn't work. I think it was shot. I had a cursor on the screen. But the trigger wouldn't work. His was functional, but it was a neat game. I almost think that yeah. it would be better served if they could on some of these. You can't do it on a lot of the light gun games, but replace some of the screens with modern, modernized screens, mod them out. You know, but that's my only critique. Yeah. There's the alien. I knew you I knew one of us. Had oh, yeah. a shot of I it. had to take a picture for someone we know there. Um to describe for those listening, it is your traditional looking alien. It looks like it's uh, right in the middle of an autopsy. They've got those little clear crystal rocks that you use, I think, in fireplaces. Yeah. That uh, representing the aliens on ice, trying to yeah. keep them cold while they're doing the autopsy. Yeah. And of Our course, the gr green light there is. Uh, I was going to uh, send the ambiance. We have a friend we always tease about alien stuff i was gonna send this picture to him hey we found evidence that there is aliens it's at it's at an arcade in columbia <laughs> he would probably tell you that that's a real alien and it, <laughs> so and all of us think that it's not an alien they just want you to think it's an alien like the one from brazil that looked like et he thought was real <laughs> this one looks similar to that it, it might be the does. same one it got it oh man we've got it. i'm sorry we we won't troll you buddy i'm sorry matt we love you Oh, it's fun. <laughs> oh, a zoomed in shot. Look at that. <laughs> uh, Stargate. We wanted to play this Stargate pinball machine, but it was glitched out. It, it was. It yeah. had uh, two uh, pinballs stuck in the launch ramp, so yeah, I'm sure it's kind of glitched out. Someone might have gave it a little bump or tilt. There's a lot of kids there, and they're rough on this stuff. I was watching them just pound on some of these buttons. Oh, like, yeah. Ah, absolutely. Beautiful picture. Beautiful picture. We should have started with that picture. It's awesome. It's the ah, that's good. It's the name of the arcade on the outside, the Witches and Wizard Arcade. Great shot, man. That's a night too. Look at that. Look at that Android yeah. coming through. That's that uh, Pixel Eight Pro for you. 
Yeah. Really, both of our phones did a good job because it was very dark yeah. in there. And both of our phones, iPhone and Android. Very good at low job. light. Uh, oh, yeah. 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 It worked out really, 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 really well. We got the shot of Neo there on the outside. Repeat picture. And I think it just, uh, we're at the end. We're starting over yeah. there. So. Yeah. It, so overall, it my thoughts, uh, you know, it's really cramped in there, but it, you could still get around. Uh, really good selection of arcade games, pinball games, amazing, you know, Independence Day, uh, the Alien uh, trilogy game, I believe. Mm-hmm. And um, the list goes on and on. Lord of the Rings, uh, Godfather was there, Star Wars. So the, the pinball uh, machines were definitely a big hit for me. Yeah, they were. That was a surprise for me. He had some really good pinballs. Uh, this they were in a prior, according to Brian, they were in a prior building that was even smaller than this one, and this one was purpose built for it. Now I kept thinking with how they had them crammed. I mean, we're talking the machines were touching; yes. they were so tight, no space at all. I, I I kept thinking about the the electrical outlet situation that what they in had the to back. do. Oh, You'd yeah. have to pull a machine all the way out away from all the others just to get to it. So yeah, it's an interesting take on a modern arcade i love that it deviates away from coins now there are things we have a place in our mall called level up similar but it's uh magnetic cards or uh near field yeah it's similar to uh dave and buster style with the uh cash cards that you can have your which is cool. i believe your t- tokens and your tickets and uh stuff like they're that. on the card and a yeah. lot of those uh, what's different about this is a lot of those machines are modern they're new or this is retro these are you know, classic ones that they had here. I love the model. I I know we had a little bit of a conversation debate on the way home, but I still passionately believe that this could be done in a different form where you're, you don't have the, as much of a problem of the wear and tear on the old machines. I love that it's old. I love that it's original, but yeah. when you're spending that much money on the upkeep for the buttons and how, and I was watching how rough these kids were on these cabinets uh, it's amazing they've stood up as long as they have, and it's a testament to how well things have been built. But with the screen technology on that, I would love to see a version of this, but with a modern take, with newer screens, modded out cabinets. Uh, even if you were to go into emulation, and we we talked about you know the pros and cons of that, because if you've ever done emulation, there are some nuances to it. You know, if it glitches out, you got to reboot, whether you're mm-hmm. running it with a Raspberry Pi or not. I personally think this could be done in a modern way, but with with a different style of arcade cabinet. I mean, I don't know what your thoughts were on that. No, I agree as well. I mean, and that would limit the, uh, not that they have a fire hazard or anything or technical issues, but uh, that would limit all the wires needed, all the outlets needed really. And then uh, resetting the, if it has a bug or if it's at a default, I think it would be a lot easier technically speaking. Well, and I was also trying to, I was thinking about, a lot of cabinets are single purpose cabinets. You see in the background of this one image was there's an X-Men cabinet. Now that, that X-Men cabinet was not original. I was looking at the marquee at the top. They crammed this X-Men cabinet into something else. And Mm. it, so I'm thinking you guys are already doing it to keep them afloat and keep them running. Why wouldn't you want to, you know, do it. But then at that point, if you had a cabinet, it could be multiple games in one cabinet. It could be beat em ups. It could be shooters. Uh, so that, that pinballs are hard to do that. Although Brian does have a digital pinball we talked about before that is televisions and it has more than one pinball in it. You could do that as well, but pinballs are kind of classic. I, I think those, those hold up relatively well. They seem to hold up better than the old yeah, CRT monitors. One well, you, you think uh, that's kind of confusing because all the moving parts and the lights and all the actions in a <laughs> pinball machine, you think, you'd think be, it would uh, yeah. wear out faster. You would, but you got to remember a lot of these screens are, capacitors and the longer they've been on you get burn in on yeah. them and yeah. so i don't know um it was it was definitely a good time i am glad we went i'm, I'm glad we checked it out uh it, it, i want to go back and and check some things out because there were so many things i get into play this terminator game to the side i wanted to play it it was slammed there was somebody on it constantly it was a terminator shooting yeah. game i didn't get a picture of it there but there's stuff that i didn't get to play so i want to go back Definitely. And I think for the price, you know, $10 for that unlimited play is such How long a great were we there? deal. Playing. I'd say at least two and a half hours. That's but right. I mean, the time went by. Dude, if you think about that, just two and a half hours, that's 10 bucks. That's $5 yeah. an hour if you were to round down. 
I mean, come on. And if you're there from when they open at the time on the weekends, I think it's like a five to 11. Dude, if mm-hmm. you're there for that entire time, you're now getting down into the, you know, that's so cheap per hour. Oh, yeah. And you could zone out and just play these and just keep chucking yeah. fake quarters in lives. You could just zone out and just play these games for a long time. Yeah, and that's what I really like about Unlimited Play. Because if you have a diehard arcade or video game enthusiast that says, man, I've always wanted to play this game. I've always wanted to get to the higher levels. I just can't keep plugging those quarters or dollars in there. Unlimited Play is amazing. No, I totally agree. It's the way to go. And it's it was kind of nice that they had all the machines switch to that. And they, I've seen some arcades, they do this thing where they try to retrofit something on it kind of like the card they try to modernize with the card thing and it doesn't really ever work very well yeah. um but they did a they did a really good job with it all they did was just basically put everything into the um free play mode i guess that's what it would call a lot of them said that at the bottom it said it was free play and and there's just so many i couldn't even get back into the little alcoves to play all of them so i i definitely want to return and i want to check out the ones that i didn't get a chance to you know to do it was a very fun time i'm glad brian suggested it he had been on us to try uh, a few times before mm-hmm. and we just never got around to it and we we finally we grabbed a bite to eat swung out here and it really was an inexpensive inexpensive way to spend an evening so if you're in the area we highly recommend it and and we just you know like to give it a plug we may go back i want to go back with some friends bring some family oh definitely i think my wife would like it and i'm sure you could find some uh, slow times oh i'm sure you could definitely you definitely could. So, I don't know if this is something Ashley would like or not. Uh, yeah, I think uh, she likes uh, the games. We played a lot of light games. You know, Hollywood theaters had a little arcade there back when we were in the dating realm and not the married realm. Uh, lots of arcades uh, before the movie started. Uh, she is a champ at uh, air hockey. That's oh, kind of yeah. her style. Yeah, my wife loves air hockey. That takes up a lot of space, though. What is neat about this, though, to your point, they're all old games. Like my wife, she talked about she played Killer Instinct all the time in the arcades. So for people of our generation, uh, I bet that there's a nostalgia factor to this that I I think that is really nice when it comes to them being old arcade cabinets. Mm -hmm. But overall, that was our trip uh, up in Columbia, Missouri. We highly recommend it. Uh, Wizards and which was it witches and wizards witches and wizards yeah so definitely go check it out yeah all right i'm gonna stop the share here and just for a quick little promo plug one thing that we're trying a little different now it's only on youtube doug and i got to talking we're like you know what something we've always wanted to do just to add some variety that is not just tied to the podcast but uses the wire nerdy brand is game reviews and there are so many retro games out there it is unlimited what we could pick but we want to pick the ones that are special to us, the ones that we've played or maybe that we haven't seen a review on. Now, there's some channels out on YouTube that do awesome reviews. They do a great job with it. Uh, so we're not you know, trying to do that. We're trying to pick the ones that actually are uh, maybe that we don't see quite as often. So we've got yeah. two out there that posted. If you want to check them out, they're on YouTube. They're not a part of the podcast, but hopefully they'll bring in some some listenership and viewership. Uh, one I did with, uh, with, as you know, if you've listened to the podcast, is with Super Nintendo's version of Wink Commander. And Doug, you just had one that posted today, which is a series we're going to try to do before the television comes out. And that is Fallout. Yep. You know, I've uh, if you go on YouTube and you type Fallout Review, there's thousands and thousands of videos. So uh, for those listening, it's not a uh, the history of or a total review or a gameplay through. It's uh, our thoughts and uh, what we liked about it, what we got from it, and uh, how it uh, affected us uh, when it first came out. You know, my love of RPGs and video games started with Fallout, so... That's kind of my thoughts on uh, these quick little less than 10 minute videos. Yeah, there's like a look back and it's kind of nice to see when we try to look at it through the lens of at the time and versus today. Does it hold up? And we try to break it down to well, we'll talk about graphics, gameplay, sound, and just give you a quick view of it. And the nice thing is, is that nowadays uh, a lot of these games you can get 
really cheap through good old games, or you may be able to have a ROM of them if you're into emulation, or if you're a collector, if you want to go out and get into that, uh, it gives suggestions about really good games that you could check out that are just still even fun to play today. So it's, we thought it might be a fun addition. So if you want, definitely check that out. And then the last thing is we also added some more things to the merch store. And I don't even know if I even have the merch store up here, but uh, we have the lower prices listed out there and if you want to be able to help support the podcast and i'm gonna bring this bad boy up share screen yeah as you're talking about that you, uh i see we've added some stickers and flags some uh blankets uh posters uh get your luggage tags backpacks cell phone covers i mean all kinds of stuff to fit every uh need for that uh, nerdy lifestyle that's right. I mean, before we kind of had just the basics of the T-shirts and hoodies, but now we actually have stickers, vinyl stickers, posters. Uh, Doug just said, uh, I, you know, the hat. I always wanted a hat option, but the one that we had out there got discontinued. So this is a new design and it's a patch. See if I zoom in on that bad boy. There. Mm -hmm. Very uh, nice. So, and there's all different kinds of colors that you can try. Uh, so there's some really nice, nice things out there that I know we always talk about it. I, I need to grab some stuff on tell you what we always say it every episode someday that baseball doug's, team doug's gonna show up with his baseball team yeah. he's gonna, you know i thought about ordering one and wearing it to the upcoming retrocon but it's gonna be in yeah. april and i'm like is it gonna be cold it's gonna be a little warm probably. i know i know it'll be too late you have to worry about that a little bit i know it'll be too late plus all those people in there you know you gotta represent i will doug did get me uh one of these tumblers these wired nerdy I'll, I'll probably be bringing that with me representing while we're absolutely you know, while we're working, while we're hustling, slinging games. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, but check this out. We try to keep the prices, we're, you know, really cheap because the overhead is not a lot, but it just helps us keep doing what we're doing. This is a passion project. We're just having fun here. Two friends talking about mm -hmm. cool stuff, uh, having cool guests on. Speaking of which, I know, Doug, you've been working really, really hard on, and we have some very good guests coming up. We do. Uh, I don't want to reveal too much. We have uh, one guest scheduled on the books uh, for next month, and it's going to be a really good interview, really good conversation. I'm working on a couple more, and we will try to bring you some really good content. Now, for those uh, wanting to go to this retro gaming convention, it is on April 20th at Stony Creek Inn. There are uh, Facebook uh, events about it, and uh, there's also a website. And I believe Keith is looking I'm at trying. it for me now. Yeah, I'm keep trying. <laughs> Retro. So there it's a really cool, if uh, no one has uh, really heard about it, it was started by a high schooler three years ago. So this will be uh, year three of the Retro Gaming Convention in Columbia, Missouri. That's right. And he does a really good job. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how it moves forward. Uh, because he started this while he was in high school, and I think his name's Sumner. He's getting close to graduating, so I don't know if this will continue yeah. on or not. We always have a good time. We started helping Brian with this because he had so much content, like, and I say kind of inventory, mm -hmm. uh, that we we were helping him out, and then we ended up just you know having a really good time with it, and it's fun because you get to walk around and see really cool stuff. Uh, they have neat guests there. They did tournaments last year, um, and it's fun. It's it's fun if you just want something to go to and, and check out the yeah. old games and it'll be cool. Yeah, and I I've seen even though it's only three years old, it's definitely expanded each time. It's getting better They're each year. Doing a really good job at it. Yeah, it's getting better each year. But this is coming up in April. We're looking forward to it. So check it out. We will cover it. And I'll stop the screen share there. And we'll wrap this bad boy up. Did you have a good time, man? I had a great time this weekend. Kind of yeah. impromptu. This is fun. Uh, we definitely need to go back. I think we can hit it at times when the attendance is a little low. We'll have a lot of uh, space to move around. Uh, most of the pinball arcade machines uh, might be open. We'll get in a pretty long play, get to beat a couple maybe. Now, one thing I will know, and I told you all on the way over and the way back, is uh, I have a very fond memory of Super Off-Road. Oh, I mean, right. it's nothing special, but uh, it's this off-road truck racing game. And it, it just, uh, I love it. Uh, I had it on Super Nintendo. I played the arcade game. So I was kind of missing that. Maybe they'll get that in the future. I was going to say, oh, uh, I remember that game. That's a great game. It yeah. had the three wheels on it. 
Mm-hmm. Dude, Definitely a good game. When you're done with your Fallout series, you should do a review of the Super Nintendo version of Super Oh, Nintendo. yeah. That's Absolutely. a great game. Great game. All right, everybody. We're going to let you go. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for supporting us. Uh, thank you for all the feedback that we get. Yeah. And we're having a great time. So bring us oh. home, Dougie. Yeah. Thanks for listening. Uh, same as you said. Give us a like. Uh, subscribe. Uh, both on audio. Both on uh, video. So uh, check us out. All right. Take care, everyone. And we will see you next episode. See ya.